If you see it on an anatomical chart, you can see that the teeth are actually an extension of your brain. And teeth are not just hard, white biting instruments. They are little teeny tiny organs. They have a blood supply, they have a liver supply and an autonomic nervous system. Welcome to the CMLand podcast. Today, our guest is Dr. Dominic Niswich. Dr. Dome is one of the world's leading biological dentists. This episode is brought to you by Alitura Naturals. Alitura brings you the best natural skincare products for radiating skin and anti-aging. Regular skincare products are full of ingredients and fillers that actually cause more harm than good. Alitura uses only active ingredients sourced and handcrafted in Hawaii. Their products contain zero fillers. The Alitura Night Cream received the 2021 Clean Cert Beauty Awards for Best Face Cream. Alitura also has skin moisturizers, clay mask, serums and cleansers. Head over to alitura.com and use the code SIM S-I-I-M, for a 20% discount. Dr. Dome, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, Sim. Yeah, I actually checked before this that uh, the last time or the first time and the last time that we talked on the podcast was uh, three years ago. <laughs> so, it was already three years ago. <laughs> yeah, which is crazy. And uh, yeah, like a lot of things have happened ever since, obviously. But, uh, you know, we've met in the meanwhile, we met uh, face to face as well and different events. So uh, it's, you know, gl- I'm glad to have you back back on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we can just give people like a brief, let's say, introduction to you again. What is your, let's say, main area of ex- expertise in dentistry? And uh, specifically, like, you can also explain, like, what is <clears throat> biological dentistry itself? Yes. Okay. So I'm a specialist for biological dentistry as well as ceramic implants. And biological dentistry, the way I, let's say, describe it is more a, it's an overlap of the traditional high-tech dentistry with functional medicine and health optimization or slash biohacking. And our goal is obviously the optimal health for our patients, which I believe starts in the mouth because that's the entrance to your system. Whereas a traditional conventional dentist sees teeth more as like biting instruments that you can, that actually you work for fill, drilling, filling and billing is what they usually say. And yeah, you either fix bites or smiles. So it's the next level of everything. And obviously we only use stuff that is really biocompatible in your mouth. Mm. Yeah, like I think many people don't really realize or haven't known before that the teeth are an organ, which, you know, I never you know, thought of it, thought about it as well until I started uh, seeing your content, you know, many years ago. And you were yeah, like one of the first that I've seen at least to like, yeah, just describe how connected the teeth are to the rest of your body and how, you know, you, the state of your teeth affects your nervous system. And, you know, in so doing also you have like, you know, biomarkers and the blood work and all those kind of things. Yes, exactly. So, If you see it on an an anatomical chart, you can see that the teeth are actually an extension of your brain, like your eyes. Everyone knows that the eyes are kind of like starting in your brain, but the same goes for the teeth. There is one nerve, one of the 10 or 12 cranial nerves is called trigeminus, which is quite pronounced. It has from all the 12 cranial nerves, this one seems to take, uses the most space in the, in the brainstem. And this nerve has three branches. One goes to the lower jaw, one goes to the upper jaw, and one ends right here um, above your eye. And it looks like this on an anatomical chart. And at the end of this nerve branch is always a tooth. And so you could imagine if this is your computer, you could imagine a teeth being like an external hard drive. And teeth are not just hard, white biting instruments. They are little teeny tiny organs. They have a blood supply, they have a lymph supply and an autonomic nervous system. So obviously whatever you do with your teeth, on your teeth, as a dentist or as a patient affects the whole anatomy. It affects your nervous system as well as your immune system, your hormones, whatever you just said is a big part of your body. It's actually you're working on like this is the central nervous system bit it's not the arm the arm is an ex- is, is just an extremity this is brain mm-hmm. 
yeah that's truly uh, yeah like re remarkable uh how how it's connected like why why would let's say your body evolve in a way to make the teeth organs because they're like pretty fragile like they can come off <laughs> pretty easily so why would they such a sensitive technically like a sensitive organ and part of your brain be you know in your mouth like do you, do you know what, what, what are your thoughts about uh, that that's I, li I like the question um i think look the teeth are fascinating organs they are hard as a stone like granite they're as, in nature if you're healthy your teeth are a stone you cannot break them they're really hard and at the same time they're so sensitive you can feel a hair in between them which is insane like a stone that feels a hair yeah so there must be something connected but as as you know like let's say epidemiology wise we kind of developed around the mouth because one of our key drivers is still finding food even though it's not really important anymore in this in this type of world because it's abundant but the way we um the way we developed um the teeth or the mouth seem to have an a really an hard impact on your overall body and yeah i would say it's not just the teeth it's the whole oral cavity the whole mouth is an ecosystem in itself you know little babies they stuff everything into their mouth and this is how they develop your immune system the immune system has a huge part in your mouth and they're there's everything is, is covered in, from immune system. You have a huge microbiome in your mouth. You have, I would say we they found up to some 700 different species in your mouth. So the microbiome, the oral microbiome is the most diversified in the whole body, even more than your whole gut system. It's not the largest, the largest is the gut, but I believe that this is part of your gut. There's this tube that starts here and ends at the back door. So it makes total sense to make these um, organs kind of sensitive to the outside environment. Could be like an initial contact point. Um, taste, obviously, in your mouth is important because when we were, yeah, when we were just living as, let's say, hunters and gatherers, we could use, we would probably eat more intuitively. Obviously, we were hunting and knew that animal was good for us. That's why we went at length to get that. But also, Intuitive eating means you have a few senses that you use, like smelling, but also at the end, after smelling and at first is seeing, there's a there's a nice mushroom over there. It looks great. Let's eat it. Then usually what you do, the next thing is smell it. If it smells good, you would still like to, to taste it. And the third, let's say the third obstacle until it gets into your body is biting on it, chewing and tasting it. And if it's then bad, then you spit it out. Obviously, with these in this world nowadays. With all the chemicals and artificial things, we can make everything taste great. But in nature, when it comes about, when it's about intuition, it could save lives. Like imagine you would eat that mushroom and it's really bad for your health. So the taste is really important, and therefore you need your teeth in the whole it's a whole ecosystem. The whole microbiome, you know, we know from studies that the microbiome in your mouth as well as in the whole gut system changes within 12 to 25 hours regarding uh, let's say important is the substrate you give it that means a baby that is breastfed has a total different microbiome than a bottle fed one or formula fed one or you when you're eating more carnivorous it's a total different microbiome than if you would be a raw vegan 12 hours is only depending on substrate and obviously what you already have in your mouth and dental repair plays a huge role in there because dental repair couldn't be more unnatural why why are your teeth becoming so soft these days? That should be the question. Because like you said, it's very fragile to put a, a tiny organ in front. But if the tiny organ is hard as a stone and very much protected, it doesn't really matter. But if it gets soft because we are living in a different environment now, then it's getting a little bit confusing, I understand. Gotcha. Yeah, you explained it very well that, yeah, like the such a vital process for survival eating <laughs> requires you to be very you know careful obviously with what you put into your mouth and also like immediately detect whatever if you eat something that is uh, poisonous or uh, exactly whatever you think like because if you and even if you let's say create like some sort of inflammatory response then uh, or if you eat something that you know causes more let's say uh, down the line would kill you then the and the individuals who didn't detect this 
delicate and uh, sensitive software in the mouth, those would die. Whereas the ones who uh, did develop this very delicate and sensitive software in the mouth, those would just, you know, through natural selection would survive. So it makes yeah, perfect sense uh, after you explained it uh, that way. And yeah, like in the modern world, you know, I, I guess, yeah, like in the modern world, the teeth be, have become somewhat more <laughs> softer compared to mm -hmm. like, the ancestral people or Aboriginal people who, you know, are, let's say, required to also have a tougher bite and the stronger teeth in the natural environment. And, you know, you, you, even, even, you can even see it based on like the amount of jaw strength required to eat like you know fibrous very fibrous foods in nature require a lot more chewing and uh, also like chewing for breaking up the bones and eating the meats and uh, stuff like that whereas you know if you eat purees and uh, a lot of these soft foods uh, in the modern world then yeah like even, even just the through like over the course of you know generations your teeth would become softer the same way like if you don't need the muscles then you would also lose the muscles eventually being by being sedentary Yes, the teeth, not just the teeth are getting softer. Also, like you just uh, alluded, the whole jaw structure gets weaker, thinner. We are actually living in a, in a world of degeneration. Imagine I'm a dental surgeon, so that means I have to do a lot of surgeries. And the teeth that are extracted most often in the Western world are your wisdom teeth because we simply do not have space anymore for them. So therefore, the doctor recommends before you get your braces, which is net normal, but super unnatural, before you get your braces to straighten up your teeth so that they fit into your body, super unnatural, right? Before you should also take out a couple of teeth, especially your wisdom teeth, because you don't need them. So now 10,000 years ago, when we were all eating harder foods, like you just said, just eat meat from a bone, or let's say a carrot or something raw, you need more strength. And we had wider jaws, and we all had space for 32 teeth. We actually even had 36. So we had an extra set because sometimes maybe 10,000 years ago, because you bit on something hard, or maybe you lost a tooth. You, had, you got more of them. You understand? Nowadays, we are so degenerated over generations that we do not even have enough teeth and our teeth are becoming more soft and soft and soft. So number one chronic disease is still tooth decay. So decay of a stone, there's something inherently wrong in our bodies. And Weston Price, I'm sure you're familiar with him. He described it very precisely in his book, Nutrition and Physical Gen Degeneration, 100 years ago, when he, for example, traveled to the Ab Aborigines. And his hypothesis was that processed foods or the advent of highly processed foods, meaning flour, sugar, refined oils, and all, and all the things that were coming to the surface or wearing pushed harder would lead to a deformation of our bodies because of a lack of nutrients because of less food and now let's say 100 years later 2023 we can even order our food in we don't even have to chew it anymore we can drink a smoothie out of everything every single day and chewing gets less and less and less a lot of women are not able to breastfeed anymore or even are taught it's bad for the baby which is total bullshit um so we have to basically reverse engineer so that our body becomes more natural again, because in nature, we are immune against tooth decay. There is no sign. There is no such thing as having no space for your teeth. This is just epigenetics, like on a big scale. And as you know, our environment couldn't have changed more within the last hundred years. Um, and therefore, obviously, we change too, but we can reverse it. That's the good part of it. Right. Gotcha. So what are the, you obviously mentioned a few of them, like sugar and uh, flowers are like the biggest culprits of tooth decay and uh, other tooth uh, problems. So yeah, like how, if you could, you know, categorize like, okay, what, these are the foods that are generally not beneficial for the teeth. Yeah. The, the other one is like, what are the good ones then? So basically, generally what the dentist would say is sugar, avoid sugar. Correct. Sugar is not just because like you might have might have learned that sugar will activate a couple of or will feed a couple of bacteria that will then knock down your teeth and build a hole in there is a little bit is a bit more complicated and it has to do with insulin has to do with your whole um saliva it has to do with um let's say with 
pH imbalances, electrolyte imbalances, but you can say the more acidic the food, the more it will obviously attack your enamel. The more acidic will uh, the acidity your saliva has, the more brittle will, will your tooth be. So sugar, obviously, it's an anti-nutrient. It's not good for anything. It's also not good for your teeth. Then anything refined, let's say refined flour, gluten-containing flour, especially gluten, if you like, look at studies from gluten and tooth decay, celiac disease, usually as people with celiac disease usually have that, uh, have very mushy teeth. So they are prone to tooth decay and these hypomineralizations. We can go into this deeper. It has to do with leaky gut and inflammation and chelation of minerals. So gluten containing grains, especially the refined ones. Um, I would also say refined vegetables, anything that causes inflammation in the long run also causes inflammation in your oral cavity, obviously. Um, also, uh, conventional dairy is usually not as beneficial as you think, but also acidity, like just lots of sugary drinks or even like fruit juices, for example, orange juice. Is super acidic, even though it has some health benefits, depends on how you work around it. Because as soon as the acidity of a drink goes below, I think it's below six, then it's already getting a little bit aggressive for the enamel. Even your coffee is very acidic. So we are drinking more acidic stuff. We're eating less nutrient dense foods. Some foods even will lead to, nutri uh, to mineral imbalances. So first of all, I, I call them the core four, gluten-containing grains, sugar, refined vegetable oils, and even conventional dairy, not raw A2 dairy that we discuss in health optimization. But the most people, to be honest, out here, maybe not your followers or mine, but most people don't even know what the difference is between conventional dairy and raw dairy. So that's the number one. And then what are uh, foods that are beneficial for your teeth? is actually foods that are beneficial for your overall health. Teeth are just the first glance. If I see a, a black tooth or anything in your mouth, any sort of inf inflammation, this translates, this little ecosystem here translates to the big ecosystem here because it's the entrance hall. Like when you go in a hotel, if the entrance hall is already shitty, you know the hotel is shitty. You understand? Entrance hall shitty, the rest of the body. So basically, all bad oral health equals bad overall health. It's as, as simple as that. So therefore, any whole foods that you can find in nature, animal foods, plant foods, it doesn't really matter. This is a little bit more individual. I'm a bigger fan of both balance. Like we need animal foods. Animals built, plants cleanse is usually what you learn when you, let's say, distract it from all the nutritional principles out there. But number one is always don't eat the food that make you unhealthy or inflamed on a daily basis. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like there is... I guess, a correlation between people who eat more of those foods and also like worsening metabolic health. So like so people who eat more sugar and flour and those kind of things, then on average, at least they are less metabolically healthy and more insulin resistant. Uh, whereas people who eat more whole foods as well, then their, you know, their teeth are going to be healthier, but uh, their overall health tends to also be better. I'm curious, like what is, you, you mentioned that, you know, the ones that they the uh, hallway is, you know, messy and uh, dirty. So the entire <laughs> hotel is also going to be more likely to be like that. So like, can you really like describe how does, you know, the, how does it go both ways like that? How does like insulin resistance or metabolic syndrome or obesity or which way yeah, does it go? Like does the poor health uh, promote this insulin resistance or is that the insulin resistance in your overall body contributes to poor oral health well, obviously it's a bit both but yeah like can we like explain yeah, or just like, yes uh, it's actually it's actually both ways yeah so for example the, the typical dental diseases are tooth decay that we just alluded on but also bleeding gums called gingivitis as well as if you're if it goes above the gums into your bone and, and loosens up the teeth it's called periodontitis therefore you have ongoing inflammation in your gum above your gum into your bone structure making the teeth more loose you lose bone actually around your teeth they get loose like the sailors back in the day when they hadn't had food collagenases stopped because no vitamin c they got scurvy and the teeth all got loose that's an extreme form of periodontitis as soon as the peri as soon as you have inflamed tissue in your mouth let's say a bleeding gum what happens is you the tissue in your mouth the gum should usually be light pinkish and never bleeding it never bleeds in nature it's just healthy and it's tight 
like this skin here. It's the same skin. It's an outside barrier. The mouth is actually not inside body. It's outside body. It's a protection. So as soon as it's inflamed, it opens up. You know about leaky gut. Yeah, it's the same principle. It's just then leaky gum, meaning bacteria and let's say toxins or not really, res uh, not really digested food particles can jump into there and cause systemic inflammation, but it's already started in the mouth. And there's very good data. There's actually a new study from 2023 showing that oral pathogens, I think in this case it was Porphyromonas gingivalis, a typical oral pathogen, was found in causing brain inflammation through the activation of microglia cells. And it's only found in the brain because it jumps in your mouth already. Same went for the C word. Like, you know, all the all the viruses that are now is November or late October. So more virus season. We know now, we know that they live in the oral cavity. And why are they, why are some people more affected and why people less? So people with oral health issues and leaky gum or gingivitis, periodontitis are more prone because the virus don't stay there. They jump in and your system gets overloaded. That's when the cytokine storms kick in. So it's a lot to do with periodontitis. It's even great studies showing that if you have a periodontitis, you're more prone to insulin resistant and diabetes, vice versa. There's also studies showing if you have a diabetes, type 2 diabetes, you're more prone to periodontitis. So you don't really know what the chicken and the egg is, but you can already see as a skilled biological dentist or let's say an overall health expert, you don't even need to be a dentist for that. With one look in your mouth, you can see tooth decay, bleeding gums, periodontitis. Mm -hmm. What you don't see and what the dentist never focuses on is the next step is, has there been any dental repair done? So have you had metals in your mouth? It's always a question that I ask on every single keynote presentation that I give because I love how the audience reacts. So for example, at the health optimization summit of our friend, Tim in London, I asked the audience, please stand up if you have or had metals in your mouth and remain standing. And the second one is, have you had a root canal treatment? Stand up, remain standing. And the third one is always, did they take out your wisdom teeth? And usually 90% of all people, doctors included, especially also on a health optimization event, they stand up, which shows me they do everything what they should do, like health optimization, diet, nutrition, lifestyle, everything they can do, they, they should, but they're still not superhuman. So now it's time to look into your mouth because this is the bit you can't biohack your way around. This is dental repair. It's 24-7 chronic fight and flight syndrome in your body, and no one talks about it or no one even slightly thinks about the correlation because there is studies showing that high levels of uh, heavy metals will lead to insulin resistance or cause depression or uh, actually lead to anxiety or hormonal dysbiosis. So let's see this way. Whatever study you will find or ever to any topic you are interested in, you will always find the same thing true to be in the oral cavity. But this is the part that no one looks to. That's the problem. No one looks into your mouth. A doctor doesn't know how to look there and a dentist doesn't know that this affects the whole body. That's yeah. the that's the issue here. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I guess it it is true that there's this idea of dental health being you know, more towards like aesthetics, and uh, even if you have poor dental health, then it's somehow not going to affect your overall health or longevity. Whereas you know, like you already have talked to us already that you know there's a massive link between your dental health, oral health, and uh, overall systemic health. So yeah, like I guess many many people just haven't yeah thought about it uh, before and they just associate uh, dental health with the aesthetics and uh, just you know how it looks kind of and the problem is on top of that that the conventional dentist and I don't, there's nothing against all your dentists out there actually the opposite with going next level this is how we are taught in university a tooth we can repair it we can do a, an extensive root canal we can do a titanium implant the only focus why we are doing it is to get the pa patient out of pain maybe but mostly is to remain or to uh, consider biting function. And then, like you said, very important point is always that it looks good aesthetically, but you can look amazing. But if you do an x-ray, you look like Terminator. So this is where we, this is just a, this is just a knowledge gap that I try to fill with all the functional medicine and nutrition and all the things that we are talking in health optimization or health in that, that there is a big part because my idea of the future is we don't even need a dentist. Because 
nature is not nature has your body designed perfectly you're immune against tooth decay your teeth are hard as stone if you start early you grow balanced you have space for your teeth and you can bite and you can breathe through your nose not through your mouth this is how nature has it unfortunately epigenetically we do all the opposite so what we should do in the future as doctors dentists health coaches it doesn't even matter um train our patients the way that they learn even before they get pregnant how to support the body during pregnancy how to breastfeed because this is the initial orthodontic treatment that nature has provided us to get a strong jaw breathing through your nose this is all breastfeeding i know not all of you women out there are able to breastfeed i'm sorry about that but if you can it's the best thing you can do especially if you had prepared your body with the right nutrition right supplements right lifestyle sleep hygiene all these things apply and then we don't even need to drill and actually lesson number one in dental school is if you can do not use the drill because as soon as you drill that tooth it's never going to be the same you see if you never need to go to the dentist for nothing you don't have any cavitation you won't have a root canal you don't have any metals in your mouth it's just not there i have nothing the only thing i had was orthodontics with this bit um i'm was i'm already one of the degenerated ones so <laughs> my bite is not working and i had no space but I hopefully for my kids, I can do it. I can already reverse it. Let's see. That's the future. But it will take time. So for now, I need a thousand at least young and wild dentists to know exactly what we're doing, how to optimize patients' health and repair in a biocompatible way. Because for now, there's so much repair to be done. It's insane. Mm. And this is all connected to chronic health issues. Yeah. So let's say someone has teeth uh, problems and uh, they ha might have like some cavities or tooth decay so like what would be your approach to uh solving that so that you know starting everything with nutrition and then maybe ending up with if you need if you do need to use the drill or whatever other tool you have so first of all if you or your kids suffer from tooth decay then i would initially check my vitamin d3 blood work it's probably on the low side and second is I would rule out food sensitivities, especially gluten intolerance. I would just go off gluten and anything that chelates minerals or leads to ongoing chronic inflammation in your gut, because we know that this leads to less minerals available for bones and, and teeth. And building bones and teeth is actually the same biochemistry. So that's number one. If they're already at the dentist's, um, us as biological dentists, we would make x-rays and then see, okay, the tooth decay is there, but it's maybe only in the enamel. So that's in the hard part of your tooth. If it's only there, then we only give nutritional advices. It has nothing to do with brushing. It's only how can we re-establish mineral homeostasis, mineral balance, imbalances. And again, vitamin D3 plays a crucial role here because vitamin D3 is kind of like the key driver um, for in, in conjunct with magnesium, vitamin K2, et cetera, to bring um, the right blocks into the teeth and bones. So we would give advice when it comes in form of nutritional advice, as well as micronutrition advice, maybe a few lifestyle things. But if most of my patients, to be honest, fly in from all over the world and they have a lot of dental repair, they have had a lot of dental repair already. So they usually send in their panoramic x-ray, a two-dimensional x-ray, where I can see everything. And they usually have a lot of metals or had them. They usually have root canals. They usually have wisdom teeth removed. So we plan the whole case to basically reset the whole autonomic nervous system to make a huge detox and rebuild it. So when they are able, when they're prepared well, and they are then finally able to come in to see us, we will remove all the metals safely. We can talk about this if you want. We take out all the root canals and place immediate ceramic implants, which are new teeth, but ceramic means they are neutral and biocompatible, they're biomaterial. And we also take care of the chronic inflammation in your jawbone from the removed wisdom teeth in, an, in, a, in, a, in one health optimization week. So you don't need to go to the dentist 25 times for this. This has all been done in one week. And I think this is such a charming concept because uh, patients really fly in from all over the world. It's rarely that we have someone from close by. It's more, more likely that we have a patient from America, Japan, and Singapore in one week than we have one from my hometown. That's for sure. And I, I hope that we can change this and teach more dentists to approach the clinic more in an overall holistic fashion. But this is how we go about it. And mm. yeah, you 
I think every every health coach or practitioner should be able to diagnose the panoramic X-ray before they even go at length with any sort of detox, detoxification protocols or whatever. Because the root detoxification is, is there anything installed in your body 24-7 that blocks your whole nervous system? That needs to be taken out. And then everything works like way better. Mm. Yeah, you know, many people have struggled with uh, heavy metals and uh, even like, you know, they're doing blood work and they're still having the symptoms. But I guess it's like many people haven't yet like realized that it might be because of the the teeth <laughs> and uh, what's in, inside the mouth. So yeah, That's the problem. No one tells them. That's yeah. the problem. No one understands that. And and even FDA, for example, a filling in your mouth or anything that we put is is a classified as a class two device, like your glasses. So basically what they're saying is the filling is not in your body. It's on your tooth outside body. The same as your iPhone is a device. And a device doesn't need a toxicological report on it. So they just look, okay, can you bite on it? And do you have any pain? That's what the usual dentist asks. Even though you would see huge cysts in a cone beam scan or in a panoramic x-ray even, they just ask, does it hurt? But which chronic disease hurt? No chronic disease hurt. Does depression hurt? Does diabetes hurt? No, nothing. That's the problem. Your body gets used to it and just basically um, reduces the volume. So you don't even feel it or hear it anymore. But you have to see Chronic inflammation is the cause for chronic health issues. And this is huge in, huge in your mouth. And obviously, you don't want to do a heavy metal detoxification when the sauce is not the fish, but the mercury filling or the root canal tooth in your mouth or even the cavitations that contain lots of mercury from previous fillings. And mm. cavitations is not a cavity. It's the I'm referring to these jawbone osteolytic processes after tooth removal that usually most people have if they had their wisdom teeth removed. Mm -hmm. gotcha so these uh heavy metal amalgams they can yeah like just leach the metals into your system 24 7 then exactly so basically 50 percent of that of that black silver filling that you might have in your mouth is mercury and mercury is still the most toxic non-radioactive element known to men and if they're in your mouth in the filling this is not too much it's, let's say it's two to three micrograms or a million of a gram per day that leaches out as mercury vapor mm. so when you grind your teeth it's more when you chew on acidic food it's more when you brush when you go to dental hygiene it's more but it's a daily process of intoxicating you with that mercury and the mercury vapor is so toxic there is no protection in your cell it can go through six layers of gloves it goes through your cell membrane without a doubt no problem the only way to get rid of it is actually to let that cell die. And it, luckily cells die over time. But if it gets into your nervous system, there are enzymes, catalases, that um, make the mercury stick for 16 to 32 years half-life, which is really bad. And obviously we are talking about fish and heavy metals in fish, but fish already has digested the mercury and it's a total different form in the fish. It's way less active than the mercury vapor out of your, out of your filling. So always first things first, um, get rid of that amalgam filling. But big, big, big caveat. Don't just go to any dentist and tell them, I want that nasty fill silver amalgam filling out of my mouth. Why? Because they will just drill it out. And drilling out an amalgam filling without proper protection causes way more of the toxic mercury vapor to leach out. And I've seen thousands of my patients developing chronic health issues after such a thing so therefore don't freak out all the things i'm telling you here right now is just more information to plan ahead to see okay there is a mercury filling where can i find a dentist who knows how to re remove amalgam safely that's possible because the idea is when we take it out we have to be protected so that there's no more harm that's always what the de doctor has to do cause no harm and it's possible but this is not how we're taught to do it. So this is obviously a part of the teachings I do, how to remove mercury safely. Mm, gotcha. And the only kind of solution uh, long-term is to remove it. Like there is no, or in your eyes, there's no like being in optimal health if there is the amalgam in your mouth still. No. Imagine you're intoxicating you on a daily basis with heavy metals and you try to be optimal healthy. How should that work? It's not possible. This stuff is not supposed to be in your body. And it is in your body. Imagine you're thinking about heavy metals and you're installed in your body 24-7, leaching out. Not possible. 
It costs you more health in the long run. Obviously, it's a chronic thing. You don't need to stress out, but it's something that I definitely would say it's worth, worth the investment to find someone skilled to take it out for you and make your mouth a clean entrance hall again without any sort of toxins, chronic infections, ongoing cysts or inflammations that spread throughout the body. And obviously, you know, if there's inflammation, it will raise your cortisol. It will raise your epinephrine, your catecholamines. Your body will just be in a more active state, more fight and flight because of it. It's just super simple. You just have to understand, okay, this time it's not the splinter that's grown in here. It is in your nervous system and the nerve, nervous system can transport every sort of toxin, every infection and every inflammation or cytokine or hormone or whatever into your brainstem within a minute. It's called retrograde axonal transport. So you just have to understand wherever it is in your body, even if you pop a pill, you feel it in your whole body, right? So mm. if you have a tooth that is chronically inflamed, it could cause your joint issue, could cause you bad deep sleep. You, can, you don't have a REM sleep, whatever. It can be your tooth. Just what I'm saying. And it's not just the mercury. It's not just the heavy metals. It's also root canals. It's also cavitations. It could be bleeding gums. My goal is just to make people understand the mouth is part of your body. It's actually part of your gut system. It's actually the entrance to your gut system and to your whole system. And you can see at one glance that there might be something or you had been at the dentist. Then you have something. Mm. Have yeah. you ever had a tooth DK? Probably not, right? No, like no. I haven't like gone to the dentist after I finished high school. <laughs> you know, in, yeah. in, high school, in high school, it's part of the curriculum to go there for every year to check up. But I haven't like visited... Uh, dentist after high school yeah so not in and the last 10 years <laughs> did your wisdom teeth have space and grew out um i'm not sure um i mean i i, I can feel them there but uh they i they've never like hurt or anything like that you know what i mean so you probably have wisdom teeth like three sets of of big teeth that you can bite on right yeah yeah, yeah that's that's nature you are probably where you grew up, you had a lot of whole foods, probably less contact to to medicine than I had. And you don't even need you don't need a dentist for that. That's how your body is designed to be. So that's all healthy. I would probably not have to do any little bit in your mouth. And this is the goal. You know what to take care of. And obviously you brush your teeth probably once a day. And you obviously don't use any chemicals. Like this is what we usually tell patients: use chemicals in your mouth as dentists. But mm. As a biology dentist, you would not do that. So you are the perfect example of a good epigenetic life. For example, I personally, my dad is a doctor, a dentist, and my mom is a nurse. So I was heavily medicated already as a kid. For whatever I had, I would get an antibiotic. Mm. For whatever I, inflammation I have, there's an antibiotic, there's the vaccine, there's whatever. There's just medically, and I don't blame my parents for that. That's just how I grew up. Obviously, there's a different growing up than if you do it all naturally. So... Obviously, I have a different gut system. My body didn't grow. I needed orthodontics. I needed to remove my wisdom teeth. I luckily don't have any tooth decay. But you know, it's all in the making. If you grow up maybe in with a lot of fast food and only like processed foods, you probably have more tooth decay. Even though you clean your teeth with fluoride and use, um, use tooth floss and a chemical mouthwash twice a day, even though you have tooth decay. That's the, what the, the studies are showing even though we're doing so much more oral hygiene stuff, we still have more inflammation, more tooth decay. So something with that oral hygiene theory doesn't really add up. Mm. And it was a nice study in a university in Germany. I think it was 21 where they just realized, okay, our pale paleolithic ancestors didn't have tooth decay, even though they maybe had plaque and calculus, but no sign of inflammation. So they just had a, a randomized controlled uh, study just one month. Control group, normal diet, and uh, and the other group, let's say a paleo paleoish diet. Only one month, hundred percent less inflammation. So they basically said what I was saying: maybe nutrition is more important than cleaning your teeth. Mm. It's yeah. that simple. <laughs> yeah, but obviously do. most people are Homer Simpson, and you cannot just tell them that from the street <laughs> because they will go backward. But I can tell that to you because you know what to do. Yeah, you know, I, I do brush my teeth, obviously, uh, twice a day, usually. But uh, yeah, like, you know, I don't think that the brushing of the teeth is the reason why 
I have never gone to the dentist. It's yeah, like the nutrition and uh, just overall healthy lifestyle. I think that has played the biggest role in that. Like, yeah, if I don't brush my teeth, then they might smell, they might get, you know, stains and they might look aesthetically less pleasing, but I still, I would, I would think I would still not develop like tooth pain or like the tooth yeah. cavities or decay or something like that. So the brushing is, you know, obviously good for the aesthetics and stuff like that. And it might keep it clean and might reduce some bacteria if you have like a worse diet, but you know, the nutrition is yeah, like pretty underrated in, in this. I, yes. I believe it's more like in the tree in like, if you would live in the woods, like a wood, like a tree becomes like a little bit of green and here and there. And I think your teeth, if you just never brush them and you live an ancestral lifestyle in the woods, you probably have not as white teeth. I'm sure they're a little bit more grayish, maybe a little bit even brownish. You, they will change within the age, I think so, because they're just, that's just normal. Maybe they even um, develop a little bit of plaque and calculus to protect, but there's never a sign of inflammation if you do that. So what you're doing is obviously perfect for your body and overall health, and therefore also for your teeth. Is It's really as simple as that. The good thing is if you, for example, have tooth decay and then someone tells you, you might want to consider testing your vitamin D3 level. You open up a whole new realm because if you test your vitamin D3 level and improve it, you know that this is a hormone that is affecting almost everything in your body, not just teeth, but also luckily your teeth. So that's that simple. So within one um, hit, you get stronger teeth, a better immune system, better hormones, better recovery, better hair, nail and whatever, you name it just by improving your vitamin D3 and with it, core minerals like magnesium or vitamins like K2, the more fat soluble ones, vitamin A, E. And obviously if you then start eating nose to tail, for example, the whole animal focus on the whole foods and skip the processed stuff, you just build your body, get into a more anabolic environment and therefore your teeth are also anabolic and get it rebuilt because you can really rebuild your teeth or remineralize them. They're actually being remineralized I don't even know how often, but a couple of hundred times a day, probably through the saliva. And you know, if you're in chronic stress, your saliva goes down, your digestion goes slower, and you're more prone to tooth decay, but also to stomach issues, ulcers, irritable tail bowel syndrome. So it's again, the whole thing starts in the mouth. Like I say, optimal health starts in your mouth. Yeah. What is like, what are the alternatives? Like you, you mentioned this ceramic uh, panels. Uh, for the amalgam so like what are some of the safe materials that you uh, think are safe to keep in your mouth so basically ideally you do never need a drill but if you had like previous dental work done if it's a tiny filling you would just use it's called composite it is a mixture out of let's say plastics and ceramics but i think if they are if the dentist uses them well you don't need to be scared about microplastics and stuff too much Obviously, there's always, always something to be discussed. That's why I say, ideally, you keep your natural tooth because there's nothing better. But let's say tiny fillings, composite, bigger fillings, you would use some partial ceramics, like let's say partial ceramic crowns, veneers, for even full crowns, ceramics. And then when you lost a tooth and you have a gap, what we do is place, it's called an implant. If you need a completely new root of a tooth, it's a dental implant. And 99.7% of all dentists worldwide use titanium as the gold standard because that's been around for 45 years. And I am one of the first ceramic implant specialists worldwide using only zirconium dioxide, which is a white, totally neutral biomaterial as a new root. Ceramic implant is what we call that. Now, it took me 10 years to do that and I've placed more than 5,000 pieces. But now only this year, it's finally medically accepted as a guideline in universities. So it's now the same for dentists. So now we can choose. Mm. And on top of it, a titanium implant is a foreign body, foreign particle that causes chronic inflammation and also obviously an antenna because it's metal. But the ceramic one is a biomaterial. And the good thing is it only osteointegrates, meaning it only will heal within your body if your body is anabolic and, and builds tissue. That's the good part of it. There's never an inflammation. It just grows with you if you're able to build. And therefore, obviously, what we do before we see patients, you get a systemized nutritional approach on how to prepare for the surgery and your case. You get the right micronutrients. It's a protocol I've developed years ago. It's called bone healing protocol. I know I don't know if you know, I told you I have a, my own supplement company. 
that I was actually, I even had that company substitution before I even opened up the clinic because I'm just such a nerd when it comes to nutrition and micronutrients. And back then I needed the products that I've developed for my protocols. That's how I went into this. So not from the perspective, oh, I need a supplement to sell. The other way around, there is no supplement that I can use for my patients, which is so clean that it cannot cause problems in any chronic health issue patient because this is how I started super unhealthy patients and now it over the last 10 years it changed more people coming to me they are like you or me they just want the next edge they know okay i have done everything not superhuman there's something in my mouth so therefore we the ecosystem i started to to work on the ecosystem backwards like just from i needed it and then i designed bone and teeth because i realized okay we need vitamin d3 k2 a different form of magnesium we need boron zinc activated B vitamins to make that all round. And this is how my brain thinks about nutrients and supplements and everything. Mm -hmm. So this is all included. And so the patient knows exactly what they have to do before they even see me. They are on that protocol for a couple of weeks. Mm, okay, so it's like pre-work and uh, then post-work as well. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. They also like when they come to see me, it's maybe a health optimization week where we do everything, where they can use whatever we do Besides the dental part, we use hyperbaric, intravenous, nutri everything from a typical um, health optimization standpoint. But they also know exactly how the lifestyle needs to be, what the nutrition needs to look like, which macros and micros they need to focus on for the next four to six months to be able to really heal that. Mm -hmm. And only then, six months later, they come back for the aesthetics, which, only fo which always follows the function. So we have to take into account the biting. This joint is super important for your whole posture. So first of all, let's say fundament or the base. And then six months later, the build up, which is then obviously also aesthetic. That's why the clinic is called health and aesthetics, because I believe if you're healthy, you're also aesthetic and not why, not the other way around. So I cannot make you nice, healthy, aesthetic teeth on like a rotten <laughs> um, floor. Makes no sense, right? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of right. But it is possible, but that's not what we do. Mm, for sure. <laughs> uh, so what about uh, brushing your teeth? So like, yeah, what are, what are your thoughts about like how often, what kind of toothpaste, what kind of toothbrush and uh, what are your like thoughts about that? I think brushing your teeth is still important, but it's not, not everything. I personally brush once a day. But I'm like you, I have my lifestyle on point. I would say for the general population who, who has never heard about nutrition being somewhat connected to teeth, start with twice a day, keep them clean, and then work on your dietary changes so that your body, that your teeth are actually already clean after eating. Because if you eat the right foods, your teeth are clean. Yeah, if the food's harder to chew, there is no sticky stuff afterwards. Whereas if you drink Coke and have your whatever, um, your burger, then you probably have some stuff sticking around and need to brush more. So conventional dentists usually use just toothpaste containing fluoride and lots of various chemicals that we are trying to avoid. We developed this in dentistry, this approach, because most patients have bleeding gums and tooth decay and a bad lifestyle. Therefore, the Band-Aid is to use all the chemicals. But ideally, Tooth decay is not a chemical deficiency. If you focus on D3, K2, the right mineral, micro minerals and the nutrition, you can really go natural. You might not even need a tooth, let's say a toothpaste. You can make it yourself even, but it should be something that you would like to eat or swallow at least. So, and if you want an active ingredient, I would usually find something where there's hydroxyl appetite in it, but you definitely want to avoid fluoride tryptosan, carrageen, saccharin, sucralose, sodium lauryl sulfate, all the toxins that are super unnecessary and actually just nuke the oral microbiome and make it worse in the long run. And especially avoid tooth widening toothpaste because those filing down your hard part of the tooth is called the enamel because there's always abrasives in it. That's what you don't want to do. If you want to have your teeth white, go to a specialist, to a dental clinic, they can do that more safely for you. Mm, gotcha. So this is brushing, but there's a little bit more to oral health if you if you want to know more. Yeah, like the, you know the mouthwash. There is like some links between mouthwash use and diabetes and 
mm. something like that because you're like removing the microbiome actually from the mouth. You not just removing the microbiome, but also, for example, the most common um, mouthwash that you can find in every drugstore, the blue one is actually designed to be a, claw, a, a floor cleaner. Like that was the first heavy marketing for it. And I don't know why they came up with the idea to put it into your mouth. Obviously, it might help with bad breath, but bad breath usually comes from lifestyle issues and maybe dental repair. It's nothing to do with just with the mouthwash. Um, so you don't, yes, this connected to diabetes and various other thyroid issues, ill tail bowel syndrome. So you find everything. If you look at the toxins or the chemicals in there, why would you wash your mouth with chemicals? Like you really, like you said, you kill your whole microbiome, but you need that microbiome. It's really important and your immune system. So what we do instead is just oil pulling and oil pulling is a Ayurvedic strategy. And usually what we use is a extra virgin coconut oil. The brand doesn't even matter. It's just native extra virgin coconut oil. You take a teaspoon in your mouth. You have to have it in your mouth and switch it around for five minutes at least. You can even do 15, 20, 25 minutes, especially in the in the colder winter month when you're prone to these achy, sore things in your mouth, like your throat is like itching, more coconut oil pulling. Coconut oil pulling actually soothes your oral microbiome and your gums. It helps your gums. It is also detoxing, so it helps with um, and being antibacterial too and antiviral because there's lauric acid in it. So that's a very good strategy. Again, with everything, the key is consistency. You just have to do it. Just do it every single day, ideally, until it's a habit. And that's amazing. You could spice it a little bit up with a couple of um, oils here and there, let's say um, essential oils like maybe a tiny bit of oregano or whatever you, you like, or clove is sometimes good, but it's just okay. You, if you, or peppermint, if you, then you have actually the, the breath with it. If you do coconut oil pulling with a drop of peppermint in it, or lemon, it will help. And you have a good breath, but the breath thing comes from within, it comes from the tongue, tongue scraping comes from the gut. Mm. Also, I think personally, to be honest, every single person on this planet if we wouldn't brush our teeth and just live ancestral, we probably have a bad breath. Like an animal has a bad breath, right? Yeah. But we're used to having a good breath, so that's why we feel it. Therefore, obviously, I brush my teeth too because I would have a bad breath too. Mm. According to what we're used to being a good breath, I think this is the difference. Because if you smell a cat or a dog, it smells bad if they're, they're yeah. breath. And they are definitely not having a bad microbiome unless they eat the wrong stuff. But if they just eat carnivorous or whatever they're supposed to eat, it's not the breath that smells like perfume. Mm -hmm. You understand? So yeah. work on a breath with tongue scraping and obviously brush your teeth. Tongue scraping, we didn't even touch. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess it's like, you know, the super white teeth aren't natural either. Like you, hmm. never, you don't have any, you know, humans in nature having super white teeth. Like the brightest natural is actually a little bit, you know, yellow <laughs> or this, you know, beige kind of, uh, if you look at the color palette directly like there's no white teeth are yeah super like unnatural but it's you know aesthetic and i guess societal standards have you know developed <laughs> actually prefer or you know many people just want to have like the brighter white teeth yeah and also if they get a bit more yellowish sometimes it's in mineral imbalances actually mm. but usually if you just wear them and don't focus on aesthetics they will just get more darker and darker just from what you eat but obviously, if you go to Hollywood, there's veneers. You can get A1 bleach. That's the color. It's so white that it, that if you see it in, in, in real life, it's just so fake. This is not European aesthetics. Definitely not. But I see that people have it. Like, my teeth are also a little bit yellower. They are just, that's just my color. I don't even have a bleaching. I should do one to try. But if I want them more white... I need to go do something chemically with them. And I don't say there's something bad with vanity. If you want to have white teeth, go for it. Go to your dentist and get a tooth whitening, but do it professionally and make sure before you do it that your teeth are not sensitive. And they are sensitive, for example, because you have a lack of vitamin D3, magnesium, K2, and key minerals. So do that first because then the teeth whitening maybe makes them a little bit sensitive for one or two days, but it's not, not causing a long-term issue. Whereas if you do tooth whitening toothpaste, you might be ending up um, filing down your nice teeth. Mm. 
they get yellow and more yellow and more yellow then because below below that enamel they are actually quite yellow mm. so it's the enam enamel that is white they're kind of only the enamel okay the two what, stentin is always a little bit more beige yellowish gotcha so but what about yeah like the teeth whitening so if you go to the aesthetic dental clinic and you get the teeth whitened like oh is that on bad or is there like healthier versions to do it no i think if you really want to have white teeth fast and you like that style I, like i said i don't have anything against vanity if you want to have that white smile go for it but let it go to a dental clinic who knows what they're doing mm. because they usually use like a three percent solution or whatever to make that and in a professional setting it's fine yeah it's not a, that you don't file you don't hurt the tooth in the long run this is just a maybe a tooth gets a little bit sensitive at the beginning but if you also focus on having the right nutrients beforehand so that your teeth are not even sensitive like vitamin d3 and k2 then shouldn't be a problem at all gotcha and what about the tooth whitening toothpaste like the charcoal toothpaste or something like that No, exactly. That's what I meant. The tooth whitening toothpaste, I would definitely not recommend right. because they really file down. It's like you're using a little tiny grip tape on your teeth mm. like every single day. And over time, what it does, they look white, but then they get yellow faster because they're more porous now, meaning stuff gets in more, more simple, like your daily food, let's say the curcumin in your smoothie, and then you have to use it again and again and again. So it's a vicious cycle, actually. <laughs> So don't do this. You don't want to do anything on your enamel. Your enamel should be intact. And you make that enamel hard with the foods you eat and the, the water you drink. So it's coming from the blood supply from the inside of the tooth, but also remineralization through the saliva ongoingly every single day. And obviously your saliva is as good as your nutrition and your, your fluid status. So if you only, if you have a lack of electrolytes, it's a problem. You need a lot of electrolytes, minerals in your body. Just simple drink water with a little bit of Celtic sea salt in it all day long. Mm. Yeah, so the saliva is made by the gums, but it's, you know, the ingredients inside the saliva come from the, you know, the body that your mineral stores and those kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, there's salivary ducts in, in, your, in your mouth that flush it out, but it's produced obviously as a parasympathetic thing. It's like digestion. You know, if you think about food, you already have saliva in your mouth. Um, it's mouth watering is what they're saying. Mm. And therefore it's also good. If you think about it, it's also important to take your time to prepare your food, to smell it, to enjoy it because the digestion is already started versus smashing down the food while you're in a hurry, because you're probably in sympathetic fight and flight. Then it might even be better to drink just a shake instead of sitting down and having something difficult to digest. It's mm. better to use the digestion when you really have the time for it, depending on what you eat. Obviously, if you then eat something simple, like if you have no time to eat, but you still need nutrients, like I, for example, personally, when I do surgeries, I, I don't, I, I usually have long surgeries. So I start at 10 with the surgery and it can go up to 5, 6 p.m. ish, but patients need to have a bathroom break. So when they do a bathroom break, I eat. Now I maybe have 15 minutes But my food that I'm eating is very easy to digest. So it might be just a lean animal protein and just simple white rice or simple potato, like two different informations for my body, easy to digest. I wouldn't sit down and eat vegetables and, and salads and stuff that are hard to digest in that phase. I would maybe do that in the morning or have the bigger meals in the evening. But simple stuff like white rice and chicken always works for me, even in a stress environment. Gotcha. Yeah. We can also briefly cover the aspect of the breathing on the jaw structure mm. and, uh, you know, how, because the, you know, what you find also is that, you know, breathing through the nose versus breathing through the mouth really changes the, you know, the teeth development and the things like that. Yes. So the first phase when you actually learn how to breathe through your nose is when you're breastfed when you're breastfeeding because as soon as you suck on the breast you can only breathe through your nose and while you do that you suck on your on the breast these muscles here the whole jaw muscles are directly actually connected to sternocleidio and to your whole posture they get strong and it pulls that lower jaw forward so that's an orthodontic treatment and At the same time, you breathe through your nose, you, do, you, you widen the upper jaw. 
the sinuses like inside here widen your jaw actually by nose breathing so that's the initial training for it and that most people are in the western world again they are mouth breathing because it's an adaption to being inflamed all the time so they usually have like a little bit of a clocked nose a little bit of swollen tonsils because of the foods they're eating usually, because of a low-grade immune inflammation, it's all swollen up. So it's an adaption to less air because your body needs air. And only then you start to breathe through your mouth. That's not how it's supposed to be. So you can retrain it and relearn it. So the, the first initial start on how to, to learn how to nose breathe again is not just simply using a mouth tape. First of all, you have to train the tongue muscle in your jaw to be able to, to be able to nose breathe again. It's super simple. So usually when you're a mouth breather, what happens is that your tongue is in the lower jaw, but your tongue needs to be on the roof of your palate, right where these little wrinkles are behind the incisors, like here. And then you can try just a simple trick before you go to bed. You put that tongue there and suck on it and do this click. Do that 30 times. You will feel how, well, how at the beginning, it's really, really, you feel that the muscle gets sore. Get that sound, like pop it again, and, and then put it up there. Close your mouth, easy, and breathe through your nose. You will initially breathe through your nose, because the, 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 but you have to retrain. It's like with muscle training. You have to get that pattern again. Therefore, do 30 claps with your tongue before you go to bed. Then put it on or up here. And maybe then start a little bit with mouth taping. And you retrain it. But this is, again, the consistency is key. Do that for 30 days. I trust you back to normal breathing. If you also cover stuff like going off the call for, go rid of sugar, gluten-containing grains, especially totally, especially conventional dairy, maybe even at the beginning when you started, when you notice that you're mouth breathing or have tonsil issues, maybe stop dairy overall for, let's say, four weeks, el eliminate it, and then slowly reintroduce the A2 one slowly. Because if you're allergic at this point of time, your tissue will be swollen. And if you have like big tonsils here, you your body just needs more air. And therefore, breathe it through the mouth. So you, it's again in the combination, but this is the first simple trick. Tongue up to the roof of the palate, suck on it until that clicks 30 times. Then maybe next step, let's say after five days, do the mouth taping and also at the same time, change your diet and step one, get rid of the pro-inflammatory foods. Mm, yeah, gotcha. That's a good good overview for that for sure. And yeah, like it's um, such an underrated topic and you know unless you are really del deliberately following people like you who talk about uh, dentistry and uh, oral health and you don't really hear that much about the importance of dental health on overall health and yeah just the other side effects that people may have because of poor uh, dental health so it's you know very i'm very glad to you know share this message as well with my uh, followers yes i think that this is my mission for long years now or my duty to teach that optimal health starts in the mouth because it's still the most overlooked and underrated part of your body, even though it's actually an extension of your brain. And even the WHO, the World Health Organization says 70% of all chronic health issues start in the mouth. They only look for tooth decay, gingivitis, periodontitis. They didn't even look for metals, root canals, and cavitations. But you see how important this bit is. And we are all teaching health here. So whatever you have, if you have still chronic acne or inflammation, you, you have your diet on point and everything, but you still have acne, for example, it's time to look into your mouth. Maybe they removed your wisdom teeth and you have chronic inflammation in your jawbone. Stuff like this. There is always, you should always diagnose, always not forget to diagnose the mouth. But here's the kicker, because most dentists will tell you it's fine because biting works. But it's not fine because underneath there's lots of inflammation and wrong materials and all the different things. So, yes, thanks for having me here so that we can teach it and share it together. Because I think, therefore, in, in terms of, I believe in co-elevation and collaboration and not competition. Because we are here to really share the message and help many people out there. And I think we can 
do this all together. Alone is not possible. We have to be the wolf pack, not the lone wolf. <laughs> For sure. Uh, you also have a book about yeah. this. So yeah, you can share that. And where, where can people learn more about you and your work? The book I've written in Germany, it's called In Alle Munde, but it was translated to English, It's All in Your Mouth. This is a, it's for the layman. This is not a medical textbook. It's just um, teaching the overall complex optimal health thoughts in the mouth system. Ideally, the easiest is actually to follow me on Instagram like yourself. And because there are links in the bio where you can have a tab bio and you find my clinic, which is the DNA and everything that I've done and tons of podcasts and articles and interviews and I try to give my best to share this message and hopefully you like it and share it too and help one more patient or pe person with it because people are really suffering and they don't know where to look. And I'm doing it for 20 years now, having had my own health issues very early on. So I'm very grateful for this, that I had to learn it this way. And I'm happy to be the, let's say the light tower, the beacon for that mission and to share it. It's not about me. It's all about that. And I'm happy to provide. <laughs> yeah we'll put the links in the show notes and yeah it was great to have you back on the podcast yeah man thanks sim yeah i'll see you around but do you want to slow down aging and add healthy years to your life then i'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock if you're interested then email me the word health to info at and i'll send you the details but other than that thanks for watching this video make sure you click the like subscribe notification bell as well my name is sim stay optimized stay empowered